So throughout this whole tutorial so far, we have not yet done anything in Rhino. We've simply looked at objects. Um, so how do Grasshopper and Rhino relate? Well, this is sort of interesting. Notice I can't select this line. This might be strange to you because it looks like I'm building something in Rhino. However, this geometry is in Grasshopper and they're different. Uh, so bear, bear with me here because this is sort of a strange concept. Um, but if you think about it, if my script here in Grasshopper is defining my geometry, if I were to physically move it in Rhino, it would be overriding and conflicting with my script. So there's a clear separation between Grasshopper geometry and Rhino geometry. Anything in Grasshopper, think of it as live, think of it as parametric, think of it as activated. Everything in Rhino, think of it as sort of dumb and dead. It is what it is and it's not um, able to be directly changed. Um, however, we are able to reference geometry from Rhino and then build our Grasshopper scripts from that. So to show you what I mean, let's build something new. Let's create a surface from two lines. So if I go to a surface, I'm going to use this ruled surface command. So drag that in, you'll see that it requires two curves. So rather than build a curve like we just did in Grasshopper, I want to reference an actual um, curve from Rhino. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to click on this uh, curve command. So there's one curve, I'm going to build a second curve. And as you can see, this is real true Rhino geometry. I have my gumballs turned on, that's why um, I can uh, move those. So how do I bring them into Grasshopper in order to build a surface between them? Well, if we go to the parameter tab, here's where these containers come into play. Now, containers are different from the other commands we've looked at, because notice they aren't really doing anything. It just, it's sort of like an empty command, an empty node. It takes something in, it spits the same thing out. So I could have taken my original line and piped that into my container, and you'll see now it's selected. Um, but it's not doing anything. It's not uh, transforming that information in any way. So I'm going to right click disconnect. What these allow you to do is to hold reference geometry like a container. So in order to reference geometry from Rhino, if you right click on your container, you can see down here I have set one or multiple curves. So I just want to do select one and it triggers something in Rhino. So curve or edge to reference. Now when I click on an object, you'll see that it turns um, green when selected and red when off. What's interesting now is that as I change this, this is still a physical Rhino object, but the Grasshopper object has been updated. So this, when I have my mouse over it, it says reference planar curve. I can now pull this in. If I copy this container down, in order to clear it, right click, do clear values. Now it says that it's empty again. I'm going to set one curve, make it the other curve. And now both of these together, you see that Grasshopper is creating the surface. So although I can select and manually adjust the curves that I've built in Rhino, I can't select the object between them because that's Grasshopper geometry. So here I am driving my Grasshopper geometry from a base set of Rhino geometry. And this is really interesting because let's say this were a facade. Well, perhaps I want to build complicated parametric geometry on top of an existing architectural model of some kind. Uh, or perhaps I want to give my design team control, physical manual control over, say, in this case, the edges of the shape that we're working with. Um, I can do that by allowing, um, deciding what is built in Rhino and what is built in Grasshopper. So notice as I adjust this, Grasshopper automatically updates. That's very powerful. Um, but I'm not able to select or manually adjust anything that's built in Grasshopper. Grasshopper is like unclickable geometry. And that's because it's driven and defined by the logic of the script. So again, it would be conflicting with itself if I were able to change it manually because that would then um, contradict the algorithm itself. So if this is how you pull geometry from Rhino into Grasshopper, you can also go backwards. So let's create a surface container. So here is uh, my this output surface that I built. If I right click this bake command, it looks like an egg. If you click on this, it's going to pull up a, um, 
a command prompt and I'm able to select which layer in Rhino I want to save that geometry to. So I'm going to save it to layer 01. And as I do this, you'll notice that I can now select that geometry. And if I go to my layer here, you'll see that that object is on that layer. So pretty cool. It looks like I just created grasshopper geometry in Rhino. However, let's go back and adjust this one uh, curve point. I'm going to set my display to shaded so you can see here. Although I adjusted that curve, which updated the grasshopper script, which created a new surface, I did not modify the surface I baked. This new grasshopper surface lives only in grasshopper, and the thing that I baked into Rhino is completely disconnected from grasshopper. This is really important. When you bake, it's like the nuclear option, you can never go back. Uh, that geometry is now dumb and dead and disconnected from the grasshopper script. So think of it like, think of baking like saving a final option. And as soon as you do that, it's over. I can maybe re-reference that geometry into something else, but it has been disconnected from the script. So as I make adjustments to my script, in this case to the geometry that's driving my script, you see the grasshopper surface changes, but the baked geometry does not. Now I want to show you a few um, a few things you might run into. So one, if I were to say accidentally delete that Rhino line, everything broke, and this container gives me an error that says reference curve could not be found. Once you delete something, uh, this container was looking specifically for that exact unique curve. So even if I were to say create another curve, maybe even the exact same location it's not going to know it's there. It's all based on the unique ID. So I would have to reselect that curve and now, okay, good, it's working again. Um, so you might notice you'll import a, uh, or open a new grasshopper file that was working previously and nothing will be happening. That's because the geometry it's based on, these reference objects, are relative to the Rhino file, not relative to the grasshopper file. But there's a nice little trick here. So let's say I built this in Rhino but I no longer want to manipulate it in Rhino, I just want to keep it all contained in Grasshopper. You have the ability to, it's almost like baking Rhino geometry into Grasshopper. Uh, if I right click on this container, right now it's referenced, so I'm referencing a live Rhino object. If I right click and click internalize data. So here I have this curve, but notice if I move that curve again, the Rhino curve changed, but the Grasshopper one did not. That's because I've broken that live connection. By internalizing it, it's like I baked the Rhino geometry into Grasshopper. So that connection has been broken. The original curve that I had, notice I can't select it anymore because it's now purely a Grasshopper curve. Whereas this referenced object, it's still a live connection. So I'm able to move it and everything updates. Again, I can right click and internalize. And once I do this, I can't undo it. Well, I guess I could maybe Control-Z. Yeah, so Control-Z, you can, you can undo every step, but um, that, uh, that connection can be uh, broken. So in quick review, if I right-click uh, and bake Grasshopper geometry, I send that geometry from Grasshopper to Rhino, but it's no longer connected to the Grasshopper script. If I internalize reference geometry into Grasshopper, it's now Grasshopper geometry, and it's no longer... Um, connected to Rhino. So that's a bit of a strange concept, right? That I have Grasshopper driving Rhino, but they are different. And, and once again, it's a strange thing to think about, but um, if Grasshopper is defining geometry based on rules and based on this script, if I try to manually adjust that, that would be in conflict with the rules of the script. So I'm not able to directly touch the geometry that I'm defining in Grasshopper. So the only way that I can uh, really physically control Grasshopper is by building my script on real referenced geometry in Rhino. So that way if I adjust something in Rhino, it updates the script in that sense. And there's a, uh, a new and flexible uh, addition that they added in Rhino 6. It's called a geometry pipeline and it's quite useful so I'm going to show you this component. So if you search for geometry pipeline, you'll see it right here. Um, this is cool because it can it will import automatically it'll reference automatically objects on particular layers so if I double click here and call it layer 01 
click this button, and then double click on the curve. This is now going to import all objects on layer one, all curves. So if I use a panel, you'll see that there are no, no curves on that layer. But if I make that my default layer and draw a curve in, you'll see it gives me a referenced planar curve. If I copy this down and say make this um, arrow 2, let's keep that there, and draw another curve in layer 2, and replace that, you'll see um, it now automatically updated that curve. If I adjust it, it works the same way as any normal reference curve. But what's really cool now is that let's say I add a new line. Let's add a curve somewhere else you'll see that it automatically updated that. And now it's piping in two curves. So this is a really useful way uh, to build interfaces, especially for your, your teams, where somebody can now be working just directly building things in uh, Rhino and will automatically pipe that geometry through the geometry pipeline into Grasshopper without having to manually update your references. So right now these are referencing the wrong curves. And if I were to say delete these, let's say I'm no longer interested in all that old temporary geometry I had, um, that command is now broken because it's referencing geometry that no longer exists. But the pipeline will always bring in whatever happens to be on that layer. So it's a useful way of importing geometry from Rhino into Grasshopper.